This presentation focuses on infant and child motor development and is part of a series of three presentations that look at motor, language and cognitive growth and development. Whilst these three aspects have been separated from presentation, they're interlinked and each aspect influences the others. At various points in the presentation, there are suggestions for links that will give you a broader perspective and greater information about the area being discussed. These links are also found in the notes section of the YouTube film. Broadly, in this presentation, we'll be looking at the principles of growth and development. I will give an overview of age-related stages of growth and development, and think about what will constitute red flags or areas for possible concern, investigation and support when growth and development does not seem to be occurring at a typical rate. In relation to physical development, there are changes in body proportions as well as physical ability and dexterity. This image shows how our body proportions change with age, achieving a sense of proportion and therefore balance as we grow. The first two images are in utero, but you can see in the other images we are more head heavy in early years, which has implications for mobility and balance, with increasing ability as we become more in proportion. Obviously this goes hand in hand with gross and fine motor development as well as cognition. The former is discussed later in this presentation and the latter in the cognitive development presentation. It is important to differentiate between the meaning of growth and of development. Growth is an increase in physical size, a quantitative change which can be measured such as in weight or height. Development is more qualitative and refers to a progressive increase in skill or function. To a certain extent this can be measured, but measured against what is typical for the age of the child. We should be mindful that there is variance in these milestones from child to child and in differing cultures. Nevertheless, it is important to track a child's development along typical milestones to be able to diagnose and or support where indicated. There are some general principles of both growth and development. Growth and development are continuous processes and occur in a predictable sequence. However, growth and development do not progress at the same rate across childhood. There are times of rapid development and times of plateau. For example, there's an increased growth rate in early childhood and then again in adolescence, with a slower growth rate in middle childhood. In addition, not all body parts grow at the same rate at the same time, hence the sudden increase in femur length, for example, in adolescence although body parts do grow in proportion with each other. There are three directions to growth and development. Cephalocaudal, from head to toes. Proximodistal, from the centre of the body to the peripheral, hence the flailing arms and legs in infancy, there's no control at this stage. And then general to specific, so those flailing hands and arms become controlled gross motor movements, and then the fine motor movements of the fingers develop. Again, whilst growth is continuous and sequential, there will be some variance from child to child as to when specific growth spurts or development milestones are achieved. Growth and development has been divided into five stages, each with typical aspects to the stage. The prenatal or in utero stage includes an embryonic stage from conception to eight weeks pregnant and the fetal stage from eight weeks to term, usually between 40 and 42 weeks. Infancy includes the neonate, defined as from birth to one month, and subsequent infancy up to the end of year one. Early childhood includes the toddler, one to three years, and preschooler, aged three to six years. Middle childhood is typical school age from six to twelve years. And late childhood encompasses biological adolescence from thirteen to eighteen years. This encompasses the physical and physiological changes of adolescence rather than the social tasks of growing independence which are socially constructed and therefore variable. Having said that, the social can impact on the physiological. For example, there is evidence that changes in diet and insecure attachment can lead to earlier periods. There is a link on the slide to an article from Psychology Today that discusses this with reference to research in this area if you would like to read more. Various scans are carried out during the in utero growth and development stages. At 12 weeks there's a dating scan where the baby's due date is calculated and a nuchal scan can be carried out to calculate the possible likelihood of Down syndrome. A scan at 20 weeks checks for 11 possible physical conditions in the baby. If you'd like to know more about this there's a link on the slide to the NHS website that leads to more information about ultrasound scanning during pregnancy. 
The first measurement that's carried out after birth is the APGAR score, named after Virginia APGAR, a US doctor. This looks at five areas, heart rate, respiratory effort, muscle tone, reflexes and colour, at one and five minutes after birth. The two timings measure recovery. These are not predictive scores for the future, but reflective of possible distress during labour. Lower scores prompt actions such as administration of oxygen, fluids, intubation and or medication as indicated. The newborn or neonatal stage refers to the first four weeks of the baby's life. This is a transitional period from intrauterine life to the extrauterine environment. Physically, there's initial weight loss, 5-10% to in the first few days after birth. However, this should be regained by day 10. A gain of three quarters of a kilogram is expected by the end of the first month. This check is undertaken by the midwife during postnatal home visits. The initial weight loss is a result of a combination of factors. Withdrawal from maternal hormones, loss of extracellular fluid, passage of meconium and urine and limited food intake at this point in time as the sucking reflex becomes established in feeding. For the newborn, their growth is all about the senses. There's very little coordinated growth and development. However, they are cognitively learning a huge amount through their senses. The sense of touch is heightened and a newborn is usually comfortable with touch. They are particularly sensitive around their face and head, likely because this is the centre of the feeding reflex. Newborns are sensitive to light and can follow objects in their line of vision, although not turn their head yet to prolong this following. Vision is part of the newborn and infant physical examination programme that's carried out by a doctor within 72 hours of birth and again at 6 to 8 weeks. This checks the baby's heart, hips, eyes and testes. If you'd like to know more about this screen, please follow the link on the slide. Hearing. The newborn infant usually makes some response to sound from birth. The newborn infant responds to sounds with either a cry or eye movement, cessation of activity and or a startle reaction. There is a national newborn hearing screening programme where baby's hearing is checked in the first few months after birth. A link to this programme is also on the slide. Taste. This is well developed as bitter and sour fluids are resisted while sweet fluids are accepted. And finally smell. This is only evident in the newborn infant's search for the nipple and breast milk. A study by Verendi et al in 1994 supports this. They asked the question, does the newborn baby find the nipple by smell? One breast of each participating mother was washed immediately after delivery. The newborn infant was placed prone between the breasts. Of the 30 infants, 22 spontaneously selected the unwashed breast. The washing procedure had no effect on breast temperature. It was concluded, therefore, that the infants responded to olfactory differences between the washed and unwashed breasts. The newborn's movements are random, diffuse and uncoordinated. Reflexes carry out bodily functions and responses to external stimuli. These reflexes are swallowing, gagging, sucking, grasp and tonic neck. When crying, the newborn draws their arms and legs to the body. Fine motor skills are very limited. The newborn can hold a finger in their fist and this is called the palmar reflex. Biologists have found that the palmar reflex is significantly more frequent in infants of fur-carrying primate species. They theorise that the grasping reflex evolved as it is essential to survive in species where the young are carried in the fur. This suggests that the grasping reflex is non-essential in humans, however, it does set up the development of the pincer grasp, which is essential to find motor development. There's significant weight gain during the first year of life from three quarters of a kilogram a month in the first months, slowing to a quarter of a kilogram a month towards the end of the year. At the same time, the baby's length increases in similar proportion, three centimetres a month in the first months, slowing to 1.5 centimetres a month towards the end of the year. Naturally, there's variance between individuals. As you may know from community placements, weight and height are regularly plotted for babies. The main factor is that they follow the percentile trajectory, with a sustained increase or decrease above or below this centile being a trigger for exploration of social and physiological aspects. If you would like a refresher regarding growth charts and how to use them, please use the link to the Royal College of Paediatrics and Child Health pages on growth charts in this slide. 
As previously discussed, this first year of life is a time of rapid growth. We've spoken about weight and length. There's also a significant increase in muscle tone and the first stages of motor and fine motor coordination, such as holding your head up, sitting up, reaching out for items and moving the head to follow objects and so forth. So, to break this down, at two months the infant can hold their head erect in mid-position and turn their body from side to back. At three months they can hold their head erect and steady, open and close their hand loosely and voluntarily hold an object put in their hand. At four months the infant can sit with adequate support, roll over from front to back, hold their head erect and steady whilst in the sitting position, bring their hands together in midline and can play with fingers and grasp objects with both hands. At five months they balance their head well when sitting, sit with slight support, pull their feet up to the mouth when supine, grasp objects with their whole hand, either right or left and hold one object whilst looking at another. At six months they can sit alone briefly, turn completely over, tummy to tummy, lift their chest and upper abdomen when prone and hold their own bottle. At seven months they can sit alone, hold the cup and imitate the simple acts of others and at eight months they sit alone steadily, drink from the cup with assistance and eat finger food that can be held in one hand. So. From birth to eight months is a time of rapid growth and development which takes the child from a complete lack of independence to being able to independently occupy themselves, usually through play, and drink and eat independently, albeit with some thought regarding the size of food pieces and the type of cup and so forth. Nine to twelve months is where mobility comes into play. At nine months the infant can rise to a sitting position alone and crawl, i.e. pull their body up whilst in prone position and hold one bottle with good hand-mouth coordination. At 10 months they creep well using hands and legs and may be able to walk but with some help. At 11 months they can walk holding onto furniture and stand erect with minimal support and at 12 months they can stand alone for a variable length of time, sit down from a standing position alone, walk a few steps with help or alone with their ha hands held at shoulder height for balance and pick up small bits of food and transfer them to their mouth independently. Knowing what is typical growth and development for a child's age is a helpful tool to be able to identify when they may not be progressing in the anticipated way. This can then trigger exploration as to what may be the cause and a plan put into place for investigation and support as needed. Based on the growth and development progression discussed so far, red flags which should prompt investigation might be when a child is unable to sit alone by nine months, when they're unable to transfer objects from hand to hand by a year, when there's an abnormal pincer grip or grasp by age 15 months, or if a child is unable to walk alone by 18 months. You may have spotted though that the timings on these red flags have generously allowed for differing development timings before stepping in to investigate. For the toddler, that's one to three years of age, gross and fine motor development come to the fore. The child is now able to move around and explore the environment with increasing skill and dexterity. So, at 15 months, the toddler can walk alone, creep upstairs, assume a standing position without falling, and hold a cup with all fingers grasped around it. At 18 months, they can hold a cup with both hands and transfer objects hand to hand at will. At 24 months, they can go up and down the stairs alone with two feet on each step, hold a cup with one hand, remove most of their clothes, and drink well from a small glass held in one hand. And then at 30 months, the toddler can jump with both feet, jump from a chair or step, walk up and down stairs with one foot on a step at a time, and drink without assistance. Fine motor skills are also developing during this developmental stage. At one year, the child should be able to transfer objects from hand to hand. At two years, they can hold a crayon and colour vertical strokes, turn the pages of a book and build a tower of six blocks. And at three years, they can copy simple shapes, such as a circle or a cross, and build using small blocks. These are aspects of development that are reviewed at the 27-month check with the health visitor. The 27-month check assesses general development, including movement, speech, social skills and behaviour, hearing and vision, healthy eating and keeping active, managing behaviour and encouraging good sleeping habits, tooth brushing and going to the dentist, keeping your child safe and vaccinations. You may notice there's an overlap between purely health focused aspects such as vaccinations with ensuring that the children are school ready which is a socially constructive development goal. 
A full overview of baby health and development reviews in the UK are available through this link. If you'd like to know more about the baby reviews, um, the link is on this page and also in the um, spiel at the bottom of the YouTube video. As highlighted in the discussion on the 27 month check, the increase in a child's mobility at this age raises a whole new panorama for child safety and a good discussion is usually had about safety around the home. Thinking about safety in the home for a toddler, have a look at these four images, four different rooms in a house. Spend a few moments thinking about the different challenges and risks um, within each room. See if you can think of ten for each room. You may need to pause the video for a few moments for this. Moving into the preschool years, that is three to six years of age, the growth during this period is relatively slow. During these years, children are mainly fine-tuning their fine motor skills. So as we said before, a three-year-old can copy a circle and a cross and build using small blocks. A four-year-old can start to use scissors and start colouring within the borders of a picture. A five-year-old can start writing some letters and draw a person with body parts. And a six-year-old is buttoning clothing and playing a board game or drawing a picture of themselves. Red flags would include an inability to perform self-care tasks, hand washing, simple dressing or daytime toileting. Again, you may notice that these developmental tasks are developmental rather than growth. And what I mean by that is they're socially desirable rather than an indicator of pathophysiology. And again, are mostly linked to independence at school. The school age child, 6 to 12 years of age, grows and develops more slowly with a gradual refining of gross and fine motor skills. Again, it's development that has the greater potential during this stage as motor skills are employed to learn and establish a range of skills and abilities such as playing a musical instrument or participating in sport. In the later school years, there's another growth spurt and with the onset of puberty, this growth spurt differs between boys and girls. For example, boys can gain slightly more weight, that's between 7 and 30 kilograms, while girls can gain between 7 and 25 kilograms. Similarly, boys can gain 10 to 30 centimetres in height, whereas girls 5 to 20 centimetres. In addition, boys usually start their growth spurt later than girls, and girls cease growth at 16 to 17 years, whereas boys continue growth up to 18 to 20 years. This is the end of the um, growth and development presentation. I would recommend having a break now um, before going on to the cognitive um, development and then the language development slides um, if you're planning on kind of doing them all in one go. Um, thank you for listening.